So, and we're live, yes. Morning. So, good morning from Javaland, day two. We're here at Night Hacking, and we have a new guest today, Nikolai. Hi, Hi. nice to meet you, and yeah, please introduce yourself, what do you want to talk about? So, I'm Nikolai, I usually talk about Java 8, Java 9, or JNet 5. So, today is JNet 5. I had a talk That's yesterday good. where I talked about uh, the basics, how to get started, um, the extension model, mm -hmm. um, and architecture, and that was pretty nice, but we talked about Milestone 3, which came out in November. Uh -huh. And this Saturday, Milestone 4 is going to come out. Oh, great. And there's uh, going to be a couple of new features, and I thought we might have a look at the, those. The Milestone 4 features. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay, yeah, great, let's take a look. Yeah, first of all, I got the sniffles, so um, you have to deal with that. Then, um, yeah, it's about parameterized tests, and it's really new in Milestone 4, and uh, I didn't even look at it yet. So uh, even I it's even new to me now, so let's figure this out. So what I've opened here, um, let's go to this. This, is this on the, what you see here, um, is uh, maybe the simplest unit test you can write, right? So um, you can even say hello world, and then execute the thing. And then there should be should hello be true, world yes. somewhere, <laughs> and it works. Okay, so far so good. But please don't rely on these kind of tests. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> well, looks like my code base is fine. Um, <laughs> exactly. Great, so this is, this is how you would write a regular test with JNet 5, and as you can see, it's really similar to JNet 4 already. So what is new in JNet 5 is that uh, parameterized tests, tests that you run multiple times with different um, input parameters, is a core feature. And uh, we'll have a look at that now. This is the playground from within the JNet 5 code base. So this is the place where um, the new params RP or test it out a little bit where you can see how it works. So um, the first thing is that I would replace the add test annotation I use here with a parameterized test. So I'm just going to do that and see where it gets me. Yes, import that. So if I run that, I expect it to fail because I didn't tell it yet where to get any parameters from. Um, oh, look at that. Still, it works. So maybe Still there could works. be an improvement to um, maybe complain when there are no parameters because mm. that's the next thing you want to do, right? You actually want to run this thing multiple times with different parameters. So maybe the most, the easiest way to do this would maybe this. Um, here you pass a long parameter, mm -hmm. and then above you describe which parameters you actually want to pass into. So you know, let's let's just take. So what we've thing. done before in that static method um, is now doable via annotations. Annotations is one way. Yeah, annotations uh -huh. is one way. That's the interesting thing. So if you look at, um, oh sorry, if you look at these sources, you see that there are different different ways to get the sources yeah. in there. Um, and it looks like value source. I heard something about CSV files. See here, you have CSV source as a. Um, oh great. Just pass them, and then you look. It even looks like a table that works as well. So I think the goal was to make to get you dif many different ways to yeah. pass in parameters to find the thing that you like most. This is really handy because uh, in the past we always wrote our own CSV parsers for yeah. for these kind of things. Yeah. Oh, by the way, that's a good good thing uh, to talk about because. Um, let me look at the Maven pom somewhere here. Um, no, eh. There we go. Then we will see that this is this is the artifact I need to write tests. Uh -huh. Usually I use it in test scope, of course, but because I wrote some code here, I use it in compile scope. But the interesting thing is that parameterized tests are their own dependency. And the reason for that is that CSV parsing is actually a library is used for that. Oh, great. And the goal okay. was for JNet5 to have as few external dependencies as, as possible. So, um, we because we, we talked about that yesterday with someone from the JNet team, and we figured this is likely the reason why it's an extra, um, an extra artifact. Because this one has a p dependency on, um, yeah. on CSV parsing. Makes sense, because if you don't want to use it, then yeah. you can just leave it out. So let's run this. And what's in really interesting here, um, if I, w I would love to show you this in IntelliJ, but IntelliJ does not integrate with the new milestone, of course. Mm -hmm. So I cannot show you this there. That would sure. be even more impressive. This part is actually an interesting thing. So what happened here is that we passed, we said we want to execute this method twice, but actually Jane reports it as two test cases. Mm -hmm. So every tool, like now Maven or um, later the IDEs, every tool will tell you that two ca test cases were run. And if one of them fails, it will show that as well. So where earlier maybe you wrote your own loop around stuff yeah, like this, yeah. then you have the problem like as soon as the first one fails, all of them right. fail, and then at the same time you don't really get the, the output you want to have because you actually run two right. tests. So we can we can try this. We can go with the third that because we can use any other. Is it still there? Yeah, there we go. Um, because we can use any assertion library you want, of course. So sure. let's go with um, the only good one, assert J. 
I'm not biased or something. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound like it. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, I just have a personal distaste for handcrust, that's all. Um, so now we, we should expect one test to fail, right? Yes. So let's see. That looks good. So, fail test. Run first, yeah. pass. So two and tests second and one, one fails. Didn't go so well. Oh. Now this is of course not the nicest way to put it, right? This is, this is the name of the test, so to speak, but it's hard to read. And I saw that you can to put name here, so let's try that. Um, so I peeked a little bit. Let me show you here, you can, is it in the playground as well? So oh if you want to have a look here. at it, then this is a good place to go to see examples, right? For yeah, developers who exactly. just want to play with it and yeah, right now. So this is a class in the Genuine 5 code uh -huh. base. So if you, if you look for it on GitHub, I'm sure you'll find it. Um, so what I was looking for was this thing here. Mm -hmm. I assume this to be a placeholder for the parameter. I didn't try yet, but um, so let's say um, testing with long this. Let's see. Um, no, the name so far the name doesn't show up. Does it? No, it doesn't look like that. But I mean that could also be, by the way. Um, within the Maven Surefire provider. So that's, of course, the information um, to get the name out. But I'm not sure where it get, gets lost. Because oh yeah, I expected uh, it to show up exactly mm -hmm. here, actually. I thought this was where the name would show up. Uh, but that it doesn't uh, could mean several things. It could be that um, this doesn't properly work. But I would mm -hmm. assume that more than maybe the Maven that Surefire, the Surefire provider. Surefire doesn't know it yet. Yeah, right. it doesn't read that name part well yet, yeah. Yeah, that's what happens once you play with snapshots, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what's I can show you the POM, actually, um, to have a look at how this works now. Um so this is this is the project that I'm ju I just showed you as I mm -hmm. said this is the uh, Jane dependency you'd usually of course use test scope here then I have the Jupyter params here and then SRJ and Mokito because I want to use those and this is where you actually start doing things so that it works um, on Jane 5 because Jane okay. 5 is not natively supported by Maven yet so yeah. what you do is use um the Surefire plugin and then tell it look use these um use these, these new uh, artifacts so this is um, the integration is not as, as perfect as it will be in the future. Of course. So yeah. um, the Maven team, I think, the Maven this this um, um, this thing, this artifact, the Surefire provider for Jane Five, was um, so to speak gifted. It was developed by the Jane Five team and then given to the Maven team. Okay. So this is what they start with to implement um, their their integration. So. Um, when I at the talk, I said that there's no native integration yet that is 100% uh, yeah. there in, in the individual tools. I mean, it's kind of obvious, right? Since yeah, it's sure, not yeah. Not final. But it still works if I would not have using, if I would not be using snapshots here, if I would just use the milestone releases, um, the, uh, may the sorry, IntelliJ integration would be already there. Oh, that's already well. there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, that's great. Um, when, I, when we're done with parameter we can try to go back and give it a try, see whether I didn't screw up the project too, <laughs> too much. And then we can run that, and then we can see um, how, it puts how, how the output is shown in, in IntelliJ. Okay, I think that's actually pretty much already it. Uh -huh. I think that's cool. And the question is, let me see. Yeah, that's awesome. That's something I look for as well. So you can also, of course, put it, um, say that you get the input information from a file. And I think what this does is not only, so these kind of different ways to provide um, the parameters not only helps um, with the use case that we used to, so I think it also unlocks some new use cases that are pretty easy now. Mm -hmm. So this used to be a little bit more complicated. Now you can pretty easily just um, get the information that you want. And it looks like you can combine them too. And um, I saw something like this, exactly. There's an argument provider, so argument you can, with you yeah. can uh, find all kinds of ways to say, like, these are the parameters I want to run with. Uh, just, just from having a look at it, it really looks super helpful. Like yeah compared to what we have right now, so yeah. we're definitely looking forward to it. And yeah. having that said, uh, I think what's the most interes uh, is inter interesting for the developers is when we can we finally e expect version 5 <laughs> to be, <laughs> well, usable, to be out there, to be yeah. final. So uh, Milestone 4, as I said, is uh, planned to be out like later this week. And mm -hmm. then uh, Milestone 5 will basically try to look into how does this all work with Java 9, and there's no oh yeah. no open issues that can still be fixed, but I think as far as I know, Milestone 5 has no new big feature plan. It's more like cleaning up. Okay. Uh, cleaning it up for the um, the release. And so I'll forward the question to someone off screen who's actually working on that. So screen what's your best guess? July. So wow it it says it's bundled July. with Java nine. I'll talk to the Oracle people. They'll just bundle <laughs> Jane at five with Java nine you download it. Yeah it makes sense. Straight away everybody's <laughs> using it right yeah. <laughs> So yeah, July, that would be awesome. And I think there are more things in the pipeline, more ideas at least. Um, 
people would like to write scenario tests finally with JUnit 5, where you can, or with JUnit in general, where you can have, um, where you can order test methods and have them mm. all run on the same instance. Yeah. So you can slowly building st build state. Um, that's something that was never possible with JUnit before. But, you know, people want to do that and, um, of course, the question arises. This is something that unit testing framework should, should do. Should do, yes. But um, the idea is that you get something that really looks different as well. So it will not mm -hmm. be just you don't have just a regular um, like this one. You not have regular tests and then just write something up here, like do it in order or something. Mm -hmm. um, the idea is that it's really obvious from looking at it that this is something that it's different. Something a a like a pipeline, like yeah, more and sophisticated test. I think that th originally the team would have liked to publish that with the uh, 5.0 release, mm -hmm. but I think now it's more likely that it will be in 5.1 or something. Mm -hmm. So to finally get something okay. out there, because the project is running for two years now. It's yes, um, and we're all desperately looking yeah. forward to it's finally. Su <laughs> it's surprisingly complex, <laughs> right? Because when you look at it, you think like, how hard can this be? Just, you know, reflection and then some annotations and you just run it, right? Um, it's not like that. And uh, so I think when they, Jane 5 does so much more than Jane 4 okay. as well, because of the, the way the architecture works is that you can actually have different test engines for different kind of tests in there. So I think JNet 5 kind of got more complex than what was estimated mm -hmm. as software projects tend to do. Yes. So now they want to get it out and that would be awesome. I think when it's out in summer, people can start using it and then new use cases will come out naturally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally makes yeah. sense. So yeah, thanks a lot for sharing this. Is there anything else you want to share with the live audience? Is there anything else I want to share with the live audience? In terms um, of JUnit testing or <laughs> Java in general? <laughs> yeah, there was something about JUnit that I just um, thought about. Oh yeah, but if you're wondering about migration, um, I just talked about those engines. Um, so let's look at the POM. Um, here I tell, um, I tell the Surefire plugin to use the Jupyter engine, which mm -hmm. understands the Jupyter tests I just wrote. Um, that will be the idea is that basically here you can just say I want to use um, or that already works. I can only use the JNet4 engine, so then you can run JNet4 tests as well. So you can within the same code oh okay. base, you can have both tests side by side. I mean, y you see this right? They look similar anyway. Um, it's very low barrier to start using them, but and you can use them side by side perfectly to make the transition easier. Yeah, exactly. Lower barrier. That's yeah. that's really good. And I would say that there's really almost no reason to actually migrate tests from 4 to 5. Uh -huh. You just, you know, if you have a huge te code base with a lot of 4 tests, just continue don't worry. To yeah, just leave it there them, yeah. and write the new tests in 5. And maybe, you know, you have, have some fancy um, rules or runners that you use that don't work yet in 5. So you just write new tests, some tests in 4 yes. as well. So you just have them side by side until you really want to make the move and uh, write all new tests in Gen 5. Yeah, that, that's really handy for reusable projects yeah. to, to have the possibility for both. You know, let me screw this up at the end, and let's try. Let's try to get Milestone three running again, so that we can, um, so that we can use IntelliJ, and show show you how quickly how it looks in IntelliJ already. So I don't want to do that then, and I want to use Milestone three here, and then I want to go back to just writing just a regular test. Um, of course, oh. Just not doing anything here. Yeah, it should. So just let's run as see. It. First of all, this should maybe work after I download the world. No, no download the world. Awesome. And now this should work as well. Fingers crossed, people. Great. Yeah. Okay, here we go. That's so good. parent That's test the is ID integration. the class, and then foo, and navigation works as well. And then all the new fancy things. If you um, create tests at runtime, that will show up as several tests here, and yeah. parameterized tests will show up here as well as several tests. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that was that. All right, so uh, yeah, thanks a lot for sharing. Sure. And uh, thanks everybody for watching. See you later. Bye. <laughs>